just like that. Hey guys and gals, it's your buddies Drew and Harry with Living History Mysteries and Three-Eyed Raven Productions. You know, throughout history here in America, there have been certain individuals that have stuck out regardless of race. I have become I have true with American legends. I know what you're talking about. Geronimo for one. What do you mean you were with Geronimo? No, really. I was there. No. Uh, check what out. What? So you you just be the eye candy. Somewhat of a truce in between at that time, but you have to remember there were years. 
years and years of violence between the Apaches and the Mexicans. And there was a lot of bad blood between them. So when the party went to the small city to trade, Colonel Jose Maria Carrasco of the Mexican Army attacked that family and killed not only Alope and his three children, but also his mother. So when Geronimo came back into camp, laying on the ground in puddles of blood, was everything that he cared for. And at that moment, Geronimo changed from a shaman to a warrior. He was so thick with grief that when he finally got home, he burned all his family's belongings. During that meditation, he claimed he heard a voice that told him, no gun will ever kill you. I will take the bullets from the guns and I will guide your arrows. At that point, he got together with four different groups of Apaches and asked them to wage war. And they all agreed and they hunted down every one of those Mexicans and avenged them. But Geronimo didn't stop there. One of the things about Geronimo was he never seemed to get over it. And not to say that he should, but he didn't. And he hated Mexicans his entire life. You know, it is said that he didn't even mark them as being kills and that he didn't think they were worthy. So that hatred went on forever. You know, Geronimo's name, Goyokla, is said to have two different references. One is that the frightened Mexican soldiers would scream out St. Jerome when facing Geronimo, and people thought they said Geronimo, and some others believed it was just a miss of Goloka, Geronimo. Either way, they knew his name. Now, Geronimo had a lot of wars. Now, remember at this time, Geronimo was at the backside of the Apache Wars. You know, we had already seen Mangus, Colorado, and Cochise, and Victorio. We had already dealt with a lot of those, and he was the young one of that group, so he was at the backside of the Apache Wars. The Mexican War and the American War came to an end, and so the Gadsden Purchase came in. And the Gadsden Purchase changed all of the lines of what became Arizona and Mexico. One thing to remember during these, these battles of this 25 years of wars is that that line would change hundreds of miles back and forth depending on the power struggles and control of that, of that border. Now, to the Apache, there was no border. It was all their land. But to the Mexicans, the Spanish, and the American government, it changed. The Gadsden Purchase completely changed what is now the border between the United States and Mexico. In 1872, the government actually made a reservation in the Chiricahuas for the Chiricahua Apaches that was actually part of the land that was originally theirs. But they were then taken to San Carlos. Now, one thing about San Carlos that a lot of people say, well, Geronimo will continue to escape. But the reality of it is, is that place is not like anywhere that they had been, even though it was called Hell's 40 Acres. And so it was not the most pleasant place to be. And so when he did escape the three times, the problem with that also was that it made the U.S. government look really bad. And the newspapers had a field day. And so when he, every time he would uh, escape, it made the generals and, and the army look extremely bad. You know, one of the things that people asked was, well, why can't you catch these people? Now, the Apache were known to have traveled 
70 miles a day, and, and the U.S. government could not even come close to that. It wasn't even feasible for them to even come close at all to 70 miles. They would run a horse to death and then eat it and then go steal another horse. One thing to also remember, in around 1886, after Geronimo had escaped on his third to fourth time, now he only had a band of 40 people. And pursuing him was 5,000 U.S. soldiers and 3,000 Mexicans. So he had 8,000 people trying to find him, and they still had difficulties. He held out for five months until finally he turned himself in to General Nelson Miles at Skeleton Canyon. Now there is a marker at the location that is close to where he actually surrendered, but it is not the exact location. That is on down the way. It's on private land right now. There were rocks stacked at that time, and it was said that this treaty would be good, this surrender would be good until these rocks melted. But we do know to this day that that's not the way that it ended. So eventually, Geronimo surrendered to the U.S. government September 4th, 1886. He was then moved to Florida and Mount Vernon, then Alabama. He inevitably ended up at Fort Sills in Oklahoma. And he spent the next 14 years. You know, one thing about Geronimo that's very interesting is that he kind of became a celebrity. He could write his name and he would be allowed to get anywhere from 15 to 20 to 25 cents per autograph. Uh, he would get a percentage of the pictures, the autograph pictures that he would sell. He would sell buttons off his shirts. People were wild for Geronimo stuff. Now, you have to remember at that time, one of the biggest things that was going on, it would have been cable today, is that these dime store novels, people loved to read about the West and read about characters like Geronimo and Mangus and Cochise and the Comanches and the wild, wild west. You know, he became a participant in Theodore Roosevelt's inauguration. Uh, and one thing about Geronimo is that, you know, he pleaded to have the people taken back to their homeland and one thing that people don't realize is that Geronimo had no more animosity towards the United States, but he said that he still hated the Mexicans and he would still kill them. And because of that, that might be the main reason that Theodore Roosevelt never let him go back to San Carlos. So they let Geronimo ride back and forth into town. One fateful day, he was riding back from town, drunk, fell off his horse into a ditch, it was raining, and he got pneumonia. And then a few days later, on February 17th, 1909, he died. Now, he is buried in Beef Creek Apache Cemetery at Fort Sill. But a lot of people believe that Prescott Bush who is the father and the grandfather of two presidents, dug up Geronimo's skull and took it to the East Coast in Skull Duggery in Yale. And then they used that head for ceremonies. Now, whether that's true or not, in 2006, the Geronimo family actually sued them for release of the head. No one knows what the truth of the matter is because it is a secret society that is not on Yale's campus. It is not formally attached to the university. But many politicians and powerful people in the United States government were members of that group. So we still don't know to this day. We were also told that at the time that the Bushes were at Fort Sill in military training, that they did dig up, but they think that maybe it was the wrong skull because nobody knew at that point where Geronimo had been buried. There's also rumor that he was dug up by his people and taken back to Arizona. No one really knows.
cause. But one thing, when you jump from high places and you yell Geronimo, you keep this warrior alive. Chase Wreck on Flag Expeditions, the legend known as Geronimo. Now, there you have it, folks. It was a fascinating the true story. story behind Geronimo, a true American legend. Like I said in the beginning, there's a lot to this story that's never been told. And watching interviews with Wes Studi, who played Geronimo in the movie Geronimo, an American legend, he talked about how Geronimo's descendants, how his family, worked on that movie and used their own oral traditions to help make that movie as great as it was. I'm going to go bring you guys your bill. Bill? What's up? He's got it. Oh, come on! Are you serious? You got any dishes that need washed? Oh yeah. We got dishes.